you felt a pit in your stomach, whether it's going to work or not, just because it was, if it didn't work, well, it was the end, like, couldn't it? I was an apprentice at Post Castle, apprentice carpenter, and I went up to the army, and the sergeant there asked me my age, and I said, 17. He said, no good. He said, you've got to be 18. So that I was a bit disappointed. So I went back about four days later, and another different sergeant there, and uh, he said, what's your age? I said, 18. Oh, he said, all right. He said, you're in. He said, so I, I was in the army at the age of 17, isn't it? My father, he put his age on 12 months as well to go into the army before the First World War. So that did help me because mother didn't feel very pleased about it. But when my father said that he'd done the same thing, uh, it did ease the situation a little bit. We used to go for training up to Castle Carine, you're on the on the rifle range up there, a big rifle range, for firing the, our rifles, learning how to fire correctly. It's a very heavy gun, and uh, or rifle, and you've got to hold it properly into your shoulder, tight into your shoulder, because if you don't hold it tight, when you press the trigger, it, it gives a nasty kick, and you'll have a, a very black shoulder in a very short time. It, uh, it kicks very hard, so you've got to hold it real tight into your shoulder when you're pressing and looking to shoot, isn't it? And uh, it's very interesting to, uh, doing that all. It was, I never thought I was going to have to do it real, but uh, I was there, that's what I joined for in case. Yes. They had this meeting and they said that as from tonight, midnight tonight, you'll cease to become the 10th Battalion Royal Welsh Fusiliers and become the 6th Royal Welsh Parachute Regiment. And, uh, and that was it. We moved up there and uh, to Hardwick in, La in Derbyshire to do a fortnight's very, very intensive training. That's what I wanted. Funnily enough, I'd often thought about parachuting in my early days. My father took my mother and two sisters and my brother. We all went down to an air show and then during the show which was on, this gentleman was walking along the wings of the aeroplane, the biplanes then, and then all of a sudden he jumped off with his parachute, in his parachute, isn't it? And it fascinated me to be seen somebody floating down like that. I went home some time after, and uh, we then got onto a garden shed, uh, took my mother's umbrella, and uh, and jumped off that with, <laughs> thinking that was a parachute, but I came down with a bit of a bump, actually. A little bit of a funny start, but <laughs> it, I'd never realised it would end up in the parachute myself. We had dummy fuselages from uh, planes with a hole in the bottom to drop through, to learn how to drop out, because it's only a very small aperture to drop through. You can easily hurt yourself. It's all very hard training. A lot, a lot failed and didn't want it. And the second week was um, learning how to jump and do your parachute drops. You had to do two from a balloon, a big a barrage balloon with a big basket underneath and uh, aperture in the bottom. You felt holes in, st in your stomach. You felt a pit in your stomach, whether it's going to work or not, just because it was, if it didn't work, well, it was the end, like, isn't it?
which was very scary. The, the balloon was the worst, the barrage balloon, because you dropped about 200 feet before your parachute fully developed. And, you know, it's a long drop down and wondering what's going to happen. But um, once the parachute opened, it was, an, it was nice oscillating down steadily. And then the next day, you'd go in the aircraft and you'd go out one at a time out of that through the hole in the bottom. Your parachute, because of the slipstream, your parachute developed that much quicker. And it, it was open before you realised it, actually. That was all right, but it was much better out of an airplane. And then later on, we had uh, the American plane, and that was a big door in the side. And that was all right. It's just like walking out through your front door, actually, that was. It was very simple and easy, actually. It's very nice. You can see a lot of ground and a lot of people down below you, and you're getting down very quick but you're oscillating back and forth and uh, and you've got to watch because you've got to stop yourself twisting if you can and uh, just getting down and seeing the men down below getting nearer to you it was it was enjoyable <laughs> feet before your parachute opened, which was very, very frightening. And uh, when you landed, you, you were down for a very short time, and they put another parachute onto you and back up again. And a lot would not do those, so we wouldn't do it. They dropped out and went and returned to different units. And uh, training was very, very hard, like, isn't it? We didn't, uh, it wasn't easy going. It was always very, very hard. You've got to keep you absolutely on tip-top form. He wasn't, he wasn't allowed to get stale or slack. It, it wasn't a picnic at any time. Ones who got killed, terrible it was. When the wind, when they're landing, the wind is, it mustn't be about 30, 35 miles an hour, or else it blow them and knock them. It rip you apart, like isn't it? It's because you can't stop, and um, it drags you. You see, and luckily I never got hurt in any of them. This is fortunate. a lot me, like, doing what I thought I was doing, helping the country, hopefully. Mm -hmm.